Well, students, we're going to keep working on these abstract pieces of art. Um, I would like you to make sure you're using a variety of different things, whether that's shading and color mixing, using line or pattern. Um, I'm going to do an example of how I did these dots here. So um, first thing is if you choose to use white, I would make that the first color you use. Um, so I outlined the edge of this shape with white. When I get to another black line, I've got to stop pressing it on really hard, going around the edges. And then I first made white dots so that I could do a small dot and then I made a big dot, small dot, and then I made a big dot, small. This one's big. So then this one was small and that one was big. Then I press the color on hard and you can see that some of my blue is mixing into my white because I've already done it, but I tried to use my white first so then I didn't end up having my blue smear in my white. So always white is first, press that on hard. Then what I did once I made white dots, then I did a darker blue around them and keeping my finger really low on the crayon so I don't break the end off. And then once I do all of that darker blue, I could pick something on the color wheel like blue is next to green, or I could do blue and purple, but I chose to do blue and light blue. So I'm gonna press that on. And I could always mix a little bit of white into that blue when I'm done. But please remember to press that color on hard. It takes a while to do, so this looks like it, I did it pretty fast because I already did it. I'm just recoloring stuff that I already colored, okay? So that's an example of a dotted pattern. Um, let's do an example of a spiral also, since I haven't done um, a spiral yet. So I haven't really used a lot of pink, so that would be a new color to use. I'm gonna do this spiral kind of starting around this dot, but remember, that you gotta find the shape first. So I'm gonna go up here, trace around my shape, pressing it on hard. When I get to this black line, I've gotta stop, go this way, go around here, stop when I get to my next black line, stop here, go around here, and you can see how I'm kind of going back and forth on the line to press it on hard once I get to the edge of the paper. We'll just connect it here too. Then I'm gonna go around my dots also so I don't get any crayon on them. Okay, now that I've done my pink, I'm gonna do pink, and I'm gonna create a spiral. A spiral is really just like a circle, so I'm gonna go around, but I'm gonna leave enough space to be able to put it, probably two more colors inside it. So I'm gonna loop it around, starts here, go around here, I usually kind of sketch it on kind of lightly first. Then I'm gonna press it on harder. So if I make a mistake, I can change it. So I'm gonna to start to do it a little bit lighter as I go here. So it kind of comes up here. So I've got to continue it here. Then it would go around here and up here continues around. It would be over here. Then it's gonna continue around here. Go all the way around, it just gets bigger and bigger. So here is a, a circle. So I'm just really kind of thinking, well, how would it go? Oh, it's gonna come here. 
and go around here, and then I've got one more dash, okay? So now I've got these in here lightly. So come back into this pattern. Press it on a lot harder. It's right in here too. In here. So that's why it's always nice to have it on there lightly first. Now, let's add another color to it. Um, pink is just like red, so that would work out good um, to do. Maybe a red or a reddish purple next to it. And that looks nice because it's like a br it's a it's darker on this lighter pink. I'm also kind of thinking like, well, if I always do the inside part of the line, then when I get to this other section here, this is going to be the inside part of the line. So you always want to be on the same part as you trace it. And then I have all these open spaces. I'm not gonna color all of it right now, um, just so you guys have more work time. But inside this space that's left, I could pick another color to do. Um, I haven't used really any of this peach color. Peach is like another version of pink. So I could use that as my color to fill this in. Orange could be good. I would take that and fill in the other parts of my paper. I mean, I, I'm realizing that does look a lot like what the paper already is. So maybe instead of that, I'll go with orange to make that look like it's a new thing. So it's nice that, that was a lot like the other color I'd already done. So then I can just change it. Yeah, I think that orange looks brighter that looks better. So, and I would continue that all the way to the inside here, just making sure not to cover up the lines that I've already done, following my spiral around, okay? So let's just pretend that shape is done because I've got to go all the way over here too, okay? Another shape that I wanted to show you um, for students who are doing um, a black, gray, white mix, um, if you do want to do a shading example of black, gray, and white, always use white first. And just find this shape. So I'm going to start off with white, and I'm going to use kind of a zigzag line. I'm going to come up like this. I'm going to make sure to go around my dot so you can trace that just like we did up here. I'm gonna go from pressing it on really hard to going lighter and lighter and lighter. Then we'll switch to gray. And then I'm gonna put that on, overlap it into my white a little bit. Don't cover up all your white. Then kind of shade that in a little more lightly. And then we'll move that into some black. Go around that dot, even though the dot's black. And I could fill the rest of this with black, 
Um, if you don't want to do that, then you could go, um, maybe I will back out of this pattern and then go from um, white, gray, black, back to gray to white. Now this is not colored in very well, kind of like I did with my spirals. I just kind of sketched it in a little more lightly to make sure that the pattern and everything would work out okay. Now I'm gonna go back using more pressure and color this in again. So we'll use a little more gray down here. Put a little more white into this. So don't be afraid to go back and color something again that you've already colored to make sure the shading and color is the best that you can do. And that's pressed on nicely. So. You can still see that I have a lot of shapes left to do on the other side of my paper. We will work on these again next time to finish up the last few shapes. So um, don't feel like you need to get it all done today. We'll work more on them next time. Just finish up the last little bit. So let's have fun working on this abstract art.